Hello, this is my uh, David Vinderstahl style tricopter um, and in this video I'll show you how to put one together using cheap materials um, mostly found in your local hardware shop apart from the motors and ESC and uh, flight controller board all up uh, the materials for this cost about $170 um, excluding the receiver and battery so let's have a look at it the tricopter just consists of uh, three motors and ESC's uh, and these are just all bits that I already had so that's why I'm using these particular ones they may not be the best but they still work uh, and the brains of the multi-rotor is the control board this is a KK2 board which is one of the cheapest and simplest uh, about $26 from Hobby King this one all the programming is done on the LCD screen via these four buttons uh, and they're all connected together via a power distribution cable also from Hobby King again very cheap now with a tricopter the tail rotor uh, pivots to act like the rudder uh, and for that you need to make up a tilt mechanism and copying David Vinderstahl's ideas I'm using this uh, nose wheel steering system from Hobby King you get these two little pieces and they fit together like that and make a, a hinge or pivot uh, and you just need to put a, an axle through there of some sort you drill out uh, one of these so that it frees up the pivot put the axle through there the motor just mounts on top and the pivot mechanism is done by a reservo uh, which just sort of screws onto there no, other side, sorry. Screws onto the motor side. This servo needs to be reasonably strong, metal geared, and probably needs to be digital too. But this is an analogue uh, 380MG, uh, which is pretty good. Props, of course. Just uh, a word about these motors. Uh, they're very cheap but these style of uh, prop adapter are very hard to balance accurately so it's probably better to get a, a motor with a threaded shaft that you can uh, bolt the propeller straight onto without having to deal with the poorly manufactured prop adapters uh, to connect your receiver to the KK2 board you'll need four male to male servo leads uh, and that's for aileron, elevator, throttle and rudder and they connect to the left hand side or the input side of the board and to hold the frame together you'll need some small bolts and nuts these are M3 by 25mm they're not that common in hardware shops so you might have to look around for them and for nuts if you're going to use the, uh, the normal nuts you need to use the blue thread locker otherwise they'll come apart but it's a better idea to use lock nuts and these are a bit hard to find, you might have to buy them on eBay. For this build I'll be using my Turnergy Plush ESCs with the stock firmware but if you're buying ESCs um, it's better to get some with uh, uh, the Simon K firmware which has been specifically written for multi-rotors apparently it gives a much uh, smoother and more responsive uh, multi-rotor. And the rest of the tricopter is basically just a skeleton to hold all of this stuff together. Uh, now for the body, I'm using the cheapest material available, which is 3mm um, MDF, medium density fibre board. For the arms, I'm using 12mm square pine. For the landing gear, I'm using this 70mm PVC pipe and just cutting rings from it. And all of this is just held together with zip ties um, so that easy to put together if you have a crash the zip ties will break rather than bending motor shafts or or breaking frames hopefully that's the theory anyway now for the body uh, the, the body can be any shape you want really uh, but I'm going to have a circle uh, with a radius of 75 millimeters and, and now I need to work out the 120 degree angles uh, and you can do that by just marking radii off around the circumference and you'll mark six of them and every second mark will give you the 120 degree angles now 
marking where the bolt holes need to be drilled. I'll talk more about them later on. Cutting out the circular body with a jigsaw, just trying to be as neat as possible. And clean up the rough edges with a bit of sandpaper. Now I'm cutting three arms of uh, 35 centimeter length using a metal hacksaw which gives a really nice clean cut and smoothing it all down with sandpaper again just to make it uh, nicer to handle. Now I'm cutting the landing gear from the uh, PVC pipe and cleaning up the dags with sandpaper again. Now I'm drilling the bolt holes through the front two arms. They're just a 3mm hole, 20mm in from the end. And drilling the bolt holes in the body, uh, the two, two halves of the body clamped together so that they're accurate. I've attached the supplied motor mount to the motor uh, and loctited those little screws in and, and that just gets zip tied to the arm. and pulling it nice and tight and just clipping off the ends. And same for the landing gear, just two zip ties and it's on. One zip tie for the ESC, uh, I'm putting that on the side of the arm, doesn't really matter where it goes. Now it's time to uh, bolt the body, bolt the arms onto the body uh, and the front two arms pivot on that inner bolt and butt up against the outer bolt and the rear arm is just clamped between those four bolts. And the idea behind this setup is that the front arms will pivot back in, in the event of a crash uh, preventing any major damage hopefully. Now I'm attaching the tail tilt assembly and you can see I've lifted the servo up a little bit with some double sided tape just so that the axle and the, the servo spline are all in a, in a direct line and just zip tying the wires on to tidy them up a little bit more now I'm attaching all the uh, ESC's to the battery using the power distribution cable now I'm mounting the KK2 board onto the body uh, using little foam pads cut from its packing material actually. Double sided tape that needs to be mounted right in the centre, uh, right in the CG in the, the geometric centre of where the motors are. And I'm just going to velcro the receiver on in front there. And now I'm plugging the motors in to the output side of the, the KK2 board. Motor 1, which is front left, goes on M1. Uh, motor 2, which is front right, goes to M2. The tail motor, M3. And the, uh, the tilt mechanism goes into uh, M4. Have a look at David Vinderstahl's KK2 setup video uh, to work out all these connections and I'm um, now connecting the uh, buzzer that comes with the KK2 board. Now I'm powering up the board uh, and checking the rotation of the motors after the KK2 board has all been set up and everything I'm, I'm not showing that bit. Uh, the front two motors are best uh, operating in opposite directions the tail motor doesn't really matter which way that spins that uh, front right motor was going the wrong way so I'm just swapping over a couple of the leads to get that going the right way now. Now I'm just uh, popping the battery under some uh, rubber bands for the moment for the Maiden and just to set it up. Popping the uh, props on and just make sure it's all turning the right direction. Now calibrating the ESCs is an another whole area that needs uh, a fair bit of explanation. I couldn't get them all to calibrate at the same time. I had to sort of disconnect them and uh, do them all individually. Uh, that rear motor is still going the wrong way for the prop that I've put on there, so I'll just swap over those, a uh, couple of those leads. 
and now that is all working so it's time for a maiden Well, it's flying, it's pretty unstable, there's a lot of wind around and I haven't tuned any of the P&I gains. I'll put some links for um, good KK2 uh, tuning videos in the description.